So moving, f- jumping from Canada to Japan, mm-hmm. um, things you love about Japan. So how about some sort of historical figures, maybe pop stars, authors, any anyone that you've sort of come across? Yeah, I, I quite have always liked Akira Kurosawa, the the great uh, Japanese director. And I used to watch his movies as a kid growing up in Canada. I'd go to a rent rent them from the shop, and I think Rashomon. Uh, Rashomon. For many of the Japanese viewers out there, or, or Akira Kurosawa fans, would know Rashomon. Um, you know, I, I love that story and the way how, you know, what happened, the incident that happened uh, in the forest, uh, everyone who saw it happen has a completely different perspective and, and you see the story playing out exactly how they present it. I think in business that's important that when you encounter a difficult issue or a challenge, you should really understand and talk to the individual people involved and try to understand their perspective to develop a, uh, you know, what's the best course of action and I think that that that's a very compelling uh, mm. uh, concept in business to really listen and talk to people and the the more you uh, you know uh, advance yourself in the organization the higher you go the more you do need to get feedback and information from people and people have very different perspectives space depending on where they're uh, mm. where they're their viewpoint right there is no sort of one right answer and one particular you know one truth it's all relative right, right? Well, yeah, I, I guess that's a pretty philosophical question. I mean, I think there are certain things that are, you know, universally true, or I think in business there might be the best answer. But I think yeah, it's very important for human issues, for social interactions, a lot of person, you know, we're still a people business. I mean, uh, what we do is still very much a people-driven business. And, and I think, yeah, understanding, you know, human relationships and how people interact with each other, it's very, uh, and, and that's very important in getting things done. Uh, so, you know, getting different perspectives and, and evaluations uh, is a very important way to, you know, pick the right people, for example. Mm-hmm. And when you're promoting people or, or developing people, is mm-hmm. how well do they get on with other people in the organization? Mm-hmm. That's important. That's actually a, a, a challenge that a lot of expat managers have with local staff. Yeah. Is how to actually read and assess yeah. actual talent and capability yeah. with people yeah. from a different culture that you may not be familiar with. Well, again, I mean, I think, you know, every country is different, but we're all human beings at the end of the day. And, and I think, um, you know, I think one of the most important things about being a manager is picking the right people. And, and I think there are certain principles which I have uh, taken on board uh, which uh, are, are universally uh, useful and acceptable. And I think you need to look at people if you know them. You need to look at their accomplishments, their achievements, what they've actually done rather than their person, you know, personality's important, attitude's important. If you want to, those kinds of things when you don't really know somebody and you have to make a short-term uh, evaluation, maybe you uh, uh, look at body language. I think body language is very, very important in Japan um, and, uh, you know, how people conduct or care of themselves. And I think Japanese, one thing I've learned about living and working here is the importance of b- the etiquette, the business etiquette, mm. how to present your name card, how to start a meeting, uh, how to sit at a meeting, mm. having a business dinner or, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an elaborate etiquette which is so important in Japan. And, and I think body language is, is one of the things I would say that in Japan is very important. You need to pay attention to uh, when you're meeting people. And I think th- those are some of the tips that mm. I would... Uh, and of course, the feedback is already mentioned, the feedback or the reputation or what other, you know, right. key people... Uh, opinions or get references Mm -hmm. don't arrive at a conclusion about who's the best person to do a certain job uh, solely on your own um, estimation you do need to get a kind of a broad based consensus yeah Yeah. yes yeah Yeah. Um, if you were to combine say something from Canada Mm -hmm. with something from Japan to make a sort of superpower Uh what, what, what would you take pick and choose from the well, I guess, you know, Canada and Japan, you know, have a quite a good relationship. Uh, and uh, I, I always feel whenever I tell Japanese people I'm from Canada, that they have this big smile on their face. And, and if they've ever been to Canada, they've sort of, you know, uh, uh, went to Vancouver and to Banff is, is extremely popular and uh, Niagara Falls and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, so I think there's a kind of a good feeling between the two countries. Um, and... Different, very. Obviously, Canada has a lot of natural resources. We have a lot of land. 
Japan is very congested, but there's a lot of know-how and manufacturing prowess. So if we could combine those two things, which I, uh, I think will, will be pretty, pretty successful. Pretty unstoppable, I think. Yes. <laughs> um, fantastic. Mike, it's great talking. So just coming to the sort of close, uh, close of the interview, um, could you give some tips? I know you've touched on these points before, uh, during the, the, our interview, but tips to you know, how to succeed, how to do well in Japan uh, for foreigners maybe who are thinking of moving here. Yes, yeah, I think uh, open mind, flexible. You don't come with a fixed agenda. I think uh, some people have this kind of, uh, you know, I, want, I need to get, the, you know, they have a long checklist of changes they need to make. Uh, before they arrive, I would absolutely recommend you sit and watch and listen and learn for the first ni 90 days, at least maybe up until six months. Just learn how things are going. It takes time to build relationships in this country. They, 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 they develop slowly, and there's a lot of nonverbal communication, mm. which is absolutely critical to developing the right kind of relationships with people in Japan. And, uh, yeah, I think you have to adapt yourself to the way the, the country works more so than kind of bend people to your will. I think people who come here with a clear idea, a fixed agenda of how things are going to go before they arrive, if they don't uh, adapt themselves, they're going to fail. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, but uh, I think it's a very open country. I think Japanese people are generally, genuinely very curious about foreign cultures and they have a very deep understanding of different cultures and countries more than other people I've met. They've really studied about Canada and what's, you know, the unique or interesting points. I'm always amazed by how genuinely curious and interested they are. So, um, yeah, it takes, it, it takes time. You have to be patient. You have to be very well organized. You have to think very long term. But you have to be yourself as well. You, you cannot try to pretend to be Japanese. Or, uh, and if you're working in a foreign company, then, you know, I think a lot of uh, it's accepted that uh, foreign companies have, have a, a different business style. And I think a lot of companies recently have become very successful in Japan. Uh, and Japanese people want to buy foreign products and work with foreign uh, companies and, and uh, that do things in a, in a different way, as long as it meets their needs and requirements, mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's a big opportunity here for all kinds of foreign businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's changed a lot in the past uh, 15 or 20 years, I think. Uh, and it's, I think the country, in, in that sense, has become more open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much more open. Very useful advice. Thank you. Um, can I just ask, I mean, Mark, just talking to you, you yes. I, f I feel this sort of drive, you have yes. that strong drive. What, what is, I mean, what, you get, what, what kind of, you get up in the morning, what's your real sort of passion? What's, what keeps you so fired up? Do you know, I always ask that question when I do a job interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I'm interviewing somebody, I basically, I always ask them that question, and if, yeah. you, if you don't, uh, if I don't get a, 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 a clear answer, then it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's kind of a bad sign to me in terms of whether how much. I think passion is very important. I think yeah. people here really appreciate passion as long as it's directed in a very positive way. Um, yeah, you have to believe in what you're doing. Uh, you have to, uh, f you know, find it fun to go to work. I like what I do. Um, I guess deep down inside, I like to solve problems. I've always been a problem solver. I like problems. I like to fix them. I don't like to avoid them or, or, or work around them. I, I kind of like to face problems head on and crack them into small pieces that can be solved in uh, small in divisible units and, and, and step by step. Uh, I love execution. I love getting things done. I like results. Mm -hmm. I like having a clear target. I think if there's a if I have a clear target, uh, you know, and, and I, there's a path to get there, and there's a flex. I like I like to be flexible to say, how okay, you show me how we're going to get there, but this is where we need to go. Let's work together. Let's meet regularly, and you can update me. And then, you know, I, I love I love results. I have a passion for getting things done. I like strategy, but I feel much better when the strategy is executed. If strategy in and of itself, yeah. without the whole kind of execution plan, for me is is uh, is just kind of daydreaming, right? And and uh, so yeah, it's it's that kind of tactical execution. Um, that, that that that's what drives me and and uh, as a person, as a businessman, uh, and it, that's pretty general and transferable. It's it's not very specific. It's more kind of anywhere I go, anything I want to do. That's the kind of way I approach it. Yeah. 
Well, speaking about job interviews, I mean, we are actually recruiting at Globus, growing very quickly, but yes. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if, if you'd be interested or not. <laughs> just, <laughs> just a joke. Yeah. <laughs> okay, final message. Um, a message for our viewers. And remember, Pete, they're probably either in Japan, could be all around the world. So any, any kind of message, viewers? Well, I think for, you know, particularly for the Japanese audience, and, and I think, uh, you know, uh, a lot, I think more and more Japanese graduates are, are want to work for foreign companies. I think, you know, 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, it was quite difficult for foreign firms in Japan to attract high quality Japanese talent. But I think, you know, Globus has done very well in Japan. I, I checked out about uh, your university uh, with uh, several people before our interview, and everybody said you've got a great reputation and uh, you're, you're doing extremely well in the, in the market. And, and I think, um, you know, that's the international aspect of what you're doing with right. your uh, uh, with your graduates and with your students. So I think it's very, very important for Japanese young graduates and, and business students to have an international view, an international mindset. Leave your country, go live and work overseas, travel, ex, you know, expose yourself to foreign cultures. I think you'll learn a lot more about what it is to be Japanese when you leave your country. I learned a lot more about what it is to be a Canadian when I left Canada. So it's you know, those, those counterintuitive things that you don't. And I think when you come back to Japan after you've spent a certain period of time living and working overseas, I think your career prospects, particularly in uh, uh, you know, foreign firms, uh, but more and more in Japanese companies as well, will be extremely bright. That's what we're looking for in terms of graduates and for new employees. We want people that have some kind of international exposure because the business that we do, we're doing international trade. Every shipment we touch, everything we move, either it originates in overseas or it terminates in overseas. So we're constantly communicating with our overseas partners. Communication with people all around the world is what makes our customers successful. So that might be kind of specific to DHL's business, but I think a lot of companies right. and a lot of Japanese firms as well are getting more and more cognizant to the fact that they want global people, uh, global Japanese, and, and even starting more and more to think about finding ways to integrate foreigners into their companies so that yeah. they can have a more broad you know, opinion and, and, diversity. and my diversity yeah. of opinion. And, yeah. and I think that's very important. Uh, way for Japan to secure its future in the future is, is by improving the diversity of opinion and different ages, different sexes, right. different cultures. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's, I think, uh, you know, developing that core competency will unleash a tremendous um, potential, which is still there for yeah. growth in, in Japan. Yeah. But we need to tap on those. Yeah those areas and yeah. my honestly very last last mm -hmm. question and i promise this is the last yes. question um you, you you gave some tips for foreigners working in japan yes. how about for japanese people to work more effectively globally any tips for you? yeah i think look the flip side yeah. is uh would be the same it's the you know the world uh, overseas doesn't operate like japan so you need to adapt and understand and uh, to foreign cultures and the way people work and Try to step outside of your body and look at yourself and, and uh, that kind of develop a self-awareness. Uh, I think that's very important. And don't get kind of stuck in your own uh, uh, mindset. And I think so, yeah, being flexible, adaptable, direct communication uh, is very important. I think you need to kind of, uh, I think a lot of uh, to, to say what you think. And, uh, uh, you know, d don't be afraid to ch face p challenges and, and um, be, make mistakes. And because and, 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 I think, you know, every time you make a mistake, we're all human beings. But if you, if you learn from your mistakes, then you're just going to be better at what you do. So trying to avoid making mistakes and do everything perfect the first time is, is kind of impossible, right? Mm -hmm. So I would really rec recommend that just go out there, jump in the ocean, uh, and you will learn how to swim, and and uh, and uh, don't be afraid to 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 make mistakes because that's where all of the great uh, successes uh, in business come from. Thank you very much. Thanks. So um, it's been a, a real pleasure talking with uh, Mark Slade, uh, President and represent Representative Director, DHL Global Forwarding Japan. 
Uh, thanks very much, Mark. Really Thanks, Adam. Great talking to Pleasure. you. Pleasure.